So Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were officially announced at the Pokemon Presents a couple weeks ago. And with being potentially the biggest endeavor and biggest game yet for Game Freak, I thought it was the perfect time to look at the best things Game Freak's previous game did that we would like to see in these upcoming games in some sort of fashion. The previous game of course being Pokemon Legends Arceus, which was in and of itself a very ambitious game with foundational changes that could very well change the nature of Pokemon games forever. So I reached out to my friends Mighty and Raph. I asked them what they really liked about the recent Legends Arceus game and what they would like continued in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Ultimately, it was clear the game had mixed receptions. I mean, Raph clearly hates it. And Mighty? Yeah. Welcome YouTube, this is Pokefan, and today I'm going to be going over everything Pokemon Legends Arceus did right. These are aspects of the game that I would love to see in some sort of fashion in the next Pokemon main series games. A huge thank you to Mighty for helping me gather footage for this video. Let's get right into it. And please consider subscribing, it would help out the channel a lot. Thanks. Let's begin with what I believe is the coolest feature in Pokemon Legends Arceus, catching Pokemon. In previous games, trainers would run in tall wild grass and eventually counter a wild Pokemon. Then the trainer would have to weaken the Pokemon, maybe afflict a status condition, and select the Pokeball item from their item bag to have a chance at catching that Pokemon. I believe this is one of the weakest features of past Pokemon games. It didn't feel cinematic, and it felt tedious and grindy. Especially with the motto for Pokemon being gotta catch them all, I felt Game Freak neglected the most important aspect of their franchise. Well, they experimented with this in the Let's Go games, and eh, we still only select items, and it felt like the Safari Zone got blown up to cover the entire Kanto region, though the aiming feature is pretty cool, and seeing actual Pokemon in the wild grass was exciting. But then, in Legends Arceus, trainers are now able to sneak on Pokemon, like you can use the grass to hide from Pokemon. Using the environment is really cool and quite immersive, but that's not all. After sneaking around a Pokemon, trainers can seamlessly enter a Pokemon battle by throwing their own Pokemon out, and you can use items to visibly impact the wild Pokemon. You can use stick gloves to slow the Pokemon down, or even use smoke bombs to conceal yourself. The aiming mechanic still remains and feels even better than in the Let's Go game. A Pokemon game now feels like a Pokemon game, where I actually want to catch them all. Each individual capture feels dynamic and fresh, and no longer do I have to wait for the painfully long loading screens while entering or exiting a battle. I'd love to see this feature in Scarlet and Violet, especially given that those games are rumored to truly be open world. The next feature in Legends Arceus did right is move relearning and forgetting. In the past, when a Pokemon learned a fifth move, they were forced to forget one of their previous moves, which is fine, but you do have to go through a lot of text boxes. Also, even more frustrating, if you accidentally remove one of the four moves that you actually wanted to keep, well, your Pokemon clearly weren't smart enough because you had to find a shady old man in a shady old house to help your Pokemon relearn that move. You had to physically travel to that NPC every time you wanted to relearn a Pokemon move. Every time. Oh, and more text boxes. But in Legends Arceus, you don't have to do any of that. When you learn a fifth move, there isn't a dialogue box asking you which move you want to forget because your Pokemon's memory had the storage capacity of a floppy disk. Instead, you have all five moves. And actually, your Pokemon has every move that it learns at its disposal. Only four moves can be activated at a time, but you can, at any point and at any time, change which form moves you want active on your Pokemon. It's crazy convenient, and critiques may argue it makes the game easier, but a game shouldn't be dependent on tedious and just boring mechanics for difficulty. I really hope this feature makes it to Scarlet and Violet. The next feature that Legends Arceus did right is being open world. Almost. The game is beautiful, and it could be more beautiful, but the Hisui region is so expansive and large that the world feels more real and more immersive. You can use various Pokemon to help you travel through this expansive landscape, and you can select specific locations to immediately travel to for convenience, essentially like the fly mechanic in previous games. But in this game, this is how you fly. This is how you travel on foot, and this is how you swim. I have never had so much fun just traveling across a Pokemon region, and it's clear that Game Freak spent time crafting the landscape for this region, keeping in mind of the new mechanics of this game. However, I must concede, this game could be prettier. I mean, look at Breath of the Wild. That game came out in 2017, Legends Arceus in 2022. So I would like to see a continuation of this open world feature in the next games, but with some improvements. At times, the world would feel barren, so hopefully that can be addressed. Another feature done right in Legends Arceus is the battle change. What? Battle change? Yes, with an asterisk. As mentioned before, you can throw your own Pokemon at wild Pokemon to seamlessly transition to a battle. It's cool, and the loading screen is essentially non-existent. You can also control the camera during the battle, which is a really nice touch. 
and seriously it is so cool to see pokemon attacking the actual trainer it leads to some really hype moments that you just want to show your friends seriously the battle system has added a new dimension to its core mechanic that encouraged more active play which is welcome after the countless games where i had to spam a all the time Many critiques of the Legends RC's battle system complain of the lack of its competitive nature and the lack of abilities. They also cite the Agile style and Strong style being very one-dimensional, and that's almost always better to go for the Agile style until you need to confirm a kill with the Strong style. I can't argue with these points, but this game wasn't built for a competitive format. There is no online play against other trainers, at least at the time of making this video. So I believe these critiques, although meritable, shouldn't be factored in evaluating a game that never intended to build a competitive scene in the first place. Moreover, the very familiar competitive turn-based battle system seemed grindy and slow, littered with text boxes for the casual player. Oftentimes, I would find myself spamming the A button to unleash the most powerful move and to one-shot opposing Pokemon to grind XP. The in-game trainers never warranted competitive game play with actual depth and if you're struggling just grind xp and go back to spamming the a button so the turn-based playstyle felt very lackluster and monotonous but in legends arceus they remedied this issue they changed the rigid turn-based system to a variable time dependent one where after selecting a move there's a refractory period before you can move again regardless of how fast or how slow your opponent attacks it leads to dynamic and fresh gameplay and with some boss battles requiring you to use your pokemon to do battle while also dodging pokemon moves yourself I can't just spam the A button, which is very welcome. It would be interesting to see how they tackle the battle system in Scarlet and Violet because Gen 9 should have a turn-based competitive scene with complex depth analysis. But in the actual games, I don't want to go back to spamming the A button again. Legends Arceus introduced another mechanic that was done right. Crafting. No, not that crafting. Crafting. In this game, you craft by picking up resources during your journey through the Hisui region. And then, you can use these resources to craft items, pokeballs, elixirs, potions, all through crafting. The game rewards you for exploring the world, taking advantage of its open world nature. So that is a feature done right. And of course, if you aren't interested in crafting because for some reason you hate Minecraft, that's okay too. It's not required, and you can continue the game without even touching a crafting station. I wouldn't mind this feature returning in Scarlet and Violet. In addition to crafting, missions and side quests were done right in this game. Some players, especially dedicated players, want more out of a game than just the main story. The issue with including more potentially unnecessary content is that it can be seen as padding that can result in casual players groaning at sheer boredom. Legends Arceus is aware of this and still doesn't abandon the dedicated Pokemon fan. Side quests are introduced to give players more out of the game if they seek it. That is, it is not required. But why do it in the first place? Well, there are meaningful rewards. Side quests can upgrade the general store, which will help you greatly in your journey. Oh, and you can actually be rewarded with potentially your first shiny Pokemon ever, a shiny Ponyta, which is a great first start. And of course, none of this is required, so if you want to speed through the game, feel free to do so. This would be a great way to provide more content in the Scarlet and Violet games. And for the last thing done right in Legends Arceus, that is difficulty. Yes, this game actually has a good difficulty scale. Recent games since X and Y, they just seemed like a cakewalk. I could spam the A button, get XP on all my Pokemon with the built-in XP share, and steamroll the Elite Four and Champion without breaking a sweat. The lack of tension and fear made these games very boring and slow. But in Legends Arceus, all of the new mechanics in the game play a role in making this game difficult. You can't spam the A button, Pokemon can now physically attack you too, you can get hurt traversing the region, falling off a cliff or simply drowning. There's so many things to worry about which makes the game feel more active and more tense. Also, the Volo battle was very difficult, making for a great final battle and making him a worthy ancestor of the heart-trampling Sinnoh champion, Cynthia. My friend Mighty can attest to that. So that's all for this video. I'm thinking of making a video to go further in depth of why Legends Arceus battle system works for its game, and why familiar turn-based battle systems, although extremely deep and interesting at a competitive level, actually harms the main games, where most users play at a casual level. Another possible video is to talk about everything done wrong in Legends Arceus. Let me know in the comments down below which one you would be more excited to see, or let me know if you have a different idea altogether. As always, if you like this video, let me know by dropping a like, and thanks for watching.